or eight. How are we doing, guys? This isn't the main feature. Really short clip, and then there's about eight and nine minutes of video after this, yeah? So a couple of things I forgot. Um, first thing, Cat A prisoners, I profile prisoners, yeah? Dispersal prisoners, long-term prisons, prisons like Wakefield, your White Moors, your Full Suttons, category A prisoners scattered throughout the jail. They're not all together like strange ways on a Cat A unit, yeah? So a good thing to say about this geezer, this rat scumbag, uh, certainly um, for the immediate future, this guy will be somewhere special, um, locked away from everyone else where no one can do him harm. In 10 years, yeah, he might well get thrown to the wolves. Yeah, he might end up monster mansion at wakefield or whatever on normal location on normal location at monster mansion you've got everything yeah not everyone there is a monster rapist child molester etc there's a lot of bad bad lads there he might end up there and somebody might remember who he is you know and that's when his life will be under threat he might never go there he might always be kept you know, somewhere quiet, tucked away somewhere. Like I said, that, that's just how it is. The other thing I forgot to mention about these guys when they come into prison, these lads, these high profile prisoners, is as humans, we have this, this dark side. I always refer to the motorway. You know, I'm on the M62, I'm stuck in traffic half an hour later. I go past an accident on the other side. The reason I'm stuck in traffic is everyone's slowing down and having a look what's going on. It's that morbid nature. When these high profile prisoners come into prison, Bridger, morbid nature, people like hover around them like flies round shit. Yeah? You know, some, some people are, are in awe. It's something to talk about, you know, uh, while you're having your custard creams and your cup of green tea or chamomile tea. That sort of thing. That used to sicken me, that. Um, and they were staff as well. You know, they talked to him all day while he was bullshitting knocks you sick the other side of the coin you got Cregan he's got a different sort of a different sort of aura if you want to use that word yeah you know he's got a reputation he's done bad things firearms and grenades so that morbid fascination is a little bit you know people might be at a distance you know if you used to take him anywhere we'd fetch him over to the healthcare from the cat a unit maybe to see the dentist or summer then people you know are a little wary of these people and i understand that so it's that dark side okay that's guys uh hope that helps hope you enjoy the uh the matinee can you call it a matinee i don't know who cares anyway thanks for all the kind comments still coming through those here that have messaged me and asked me about this guy hope this answers some of your questions I'll see you there. Come on, kidda. How do? Yeah. Back on the old pit site, beautiful day. Very autumnal though. So I've had lots of questions um, about Wayne Cousins, high profile prisoner. Um, how are these people treated in prison? All over the press, social media, everywhere. Everyone's got their own comments. People are talking about never trusting the police again. All sorts of things. I'm not get involved in that. I'm going to concentrate on how high profile prisoners are treated in prison. A lot of prisoners will tell you that they get preferential treatment. They're treated different, they're treated special. I can completely understand where they're coming from with that. Um, Forest Bank, when I worked there, no high profile prisoners. If that had been, they don't go to a normal location. At Forest Bank, two places at that time you could have put someone. 
They didn't have a VP wing then, vulnerable prisoner wing, sex offenders and the like. There was just the healthcare and the seg. Um, either place could have been located there and they would have been safe. When I say that, you know, people, people, it's just, probably want to think that they, they're going to have a rough time or whatever. Sometime in their career, they might well. But early on, in prison, there's people way higher up than you and me will be making decisions about these people. Wow, it's windy, guys. I am quite aware of the sound. I might stay down the bottom end of the field. Just give you a quick look. It does come. Beautiful day, guys. Beautiful. So, I'll do a comparison with Strange Ways as well. Dealt with a fair number of high profile prisoners, some more involved than others. So, if we take two people, um, Cregan and Bridger. Cregan, Cat Aid, extremely high profile. He's going to be in the segregation or he's going to be on a Cat A unit. That's it at Strange Ways. Yeah? Bridger. Bridger could have gone on the VP unit at Strange Ways. It was opposite the Cat A unit and they did have Cat A VPs, vulnerable prisoners, on there at some time or other. But they weren't going to put him on there. They didn't want him in the seg. He was always going to be on an act form. Act form. Assessment, caring, custody, teamwork. To document self-harm and suicide. They don't want any of them down the seg now if they can help it. Um, and then you got healthcare. So Bridger comes to healthcare. Right. So this guy. I don't know where he's going to be going. Like I say, it's not me or, or thee. People way up are going to make decisions about these guys, where they're going. And when people talk about being treated different, here's the thing, the people at the top don't want this guy going into prison and someone cuts his throat next week and he's dead. They don't want it. So, I would imagine he'll be on a special unit somewhere, some quiet prison. Again, you know, there is prisons scattered about that are quiet. And, and that's, what, that's where these people head. Obviously, Bridger, when he left Strange Ways, went to Monster Mansion. HMP Wakefield called because of some of the people that reside there. You know, they've got the worst of the worst. Um, you know, just child killers, rapists, you know, you, you name it, they're the worst of the worst. However, a lot of these people in these prisons like Monster Mansion, you know, they have their own set of rules, so... I believe he was a rapist, some really bad rapist tried to kill Bridger, pinned him down, tried to cut his throat. So there is some sort of, um, I don't know whether you call it honour or whatever, code, whatever you, you want to call it, there is that thing going on. So people like Bridger, Huntley, another good example, they're always going to be kept in special conditions, yeah? Um, they don't want anything happening, they don't want to get press. The, the prison service don't want the negative publicity that would come from that. Come on, kidder. So this lad, when we're talking about special, um, he'll be on an act document, someone will open one on him. All high profile prisoners have these documents opened on him. You know, whole of life. Just come into my head there, capital punishment. That's never going to happen in this country. Um, you know, I can see people talking about it on social media. What's this guy going to cost the public, you know, to keep him alive and well for however many years? That sort of thing. For me, like I said today, social media press everywhere, this guy. You know, it's in years to come. I hope these people get buried, as it were and you know they're not coming back into the press and the like i've talked about this before um the tragedy of some of these killers these high profile killers you look at 
you know, Brady and Hinley, yeah? That guy, all his time in prison, in and out of the press. Them poor families, absolutely tortured. Every time he come in, it's bringing it back up. He never give them any peace. Uh, it's just endless, endless. So yeah, when they, when they go in prison, people will see or see it as they're getting special treatment. Um, they will be looked after. Prison officers, if you're an arsy prison officer, you'll still be arsy. If you're a decent officer, you'll still be decent. If you're middle of the road, you'll still be middle of the road. The SOs will treat them same, follow procedures, the senior officers and the governors. Outside the nick, these things happen. You know, people make decisions, how these people are gonna be kept, where they're gonna be kept, the conditions. Um, I've no doubt it may be go on a constant watch, which means literally you're in a cell, bars, perspex so you can see them, various uh, different constant watch cells throughout the prison system, but basically there'll be an officer sat there 24 hours watching, watching everything you do. Little bit of privacy, not a lot, you know, perhaps a toilet, just out of the way, but you'll still be able to see what they're doing. It will definitely be on an intermittent watch, five times an hour, checking them, 24 hours a day. Night, boom, observation, make sure they're breathing, make sure they're alive. This is how it is, guys. You know, it's nothing to do with us guys. Way outside the prison. Um, but again, you know, whole of life, like it says, some of these guys are going to be around a long time. Let's, let's hope that they're not in social media all the time and that. And people, although they'll never be able to move on, are allowed some peace, as it were. Um, I say, I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to give you an example. Quite an high profile prisoner in our, in our jail, not in for a serious offence. And that was Joey Barton. So all you football guys out there, yeah, he came to strange ways. Um, again, outside the nick, not our prison governor, not our number one governor. Somebody made decisions about him. He was given, he was definitely given preferential treatment. He was given a job straight away. Um, he was allowed access to the gym all the time so he could keep fit. I believe he got the gym orderly job in the main gym. Um, PIs wouldn't mind that. However, he didn't do his jail like everyone else. He weren't just a name and number on a wing. It was also put on B-Wing, very quiet wing. Um, <laughs> B-Wing, yeah, uh, the drug-free wing. No, no such things anywhere. Yeah, drugs everywhere. Every prison, every country in the world, they're in a drug-free wing. But it was put on there, it was quiet. They picked their own prisoners. So that's Joey Barton. He weren't in for any serious offence, although they will have been a victim. But he was treated different to everyone else. He got privileges but that was nothing to do with the staff in strange ways. Stevie, come here. Parting shot, guys. Are you all right, love? Yeah. Come here, you. Good lad, come here. Thanks for coming, Al City. <laughs>